Hi, this is the Cooler Master, Master Liquid 240. These are the two fans and the radiator behind it, and it is now faulty. I'm just going to remove the radiator. On the top you'll see this lid. I need to open this lid so I'm just going to use a screwdriver or a blade. So I'm just going to pry it open. There is an opening here. Just be careful uh, you don't damage these wires. Don't shove the screwdriver in the center. I'm just peeling it open on the sides. There we go. So the back is open now. This is just an LED here. If you look inside, you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six screws which need to be loosened. If you're wondering what these are, these are just brackets for this type of CPU, which is the AMD thread ripper. It comes, it requires these brackets. Yours might look a little bit different. Right, now once you've opened it, just be very careful. Flip it over now. And you can see there's a little bit of antifreeze that is leaked out. And I can open this. There we go. Right, now there are eight screws at the bottom here which need to be taken out. This has a triangular shape and I did not have a triangular bit. So what I did is I ground down this uh, cheap screwdriver into the shape of that head. Right, so I'm just going to unhook these wires here. There we go. Right, so I'm just going to drain this into here. I want to see if there's any dirt that is blocking this impeller. Right, what I've done here, this is a bench supply. I've just set it to 12 volts there or thereabout. And I've connected the positive and negative to the wires here. And what I'm doing is I'm just testing the motor here. And as you can see that uh, it works fine. Even if I force, even if I stop it, it restarts. It seems to be operating fine. As you can see, it's going to restart now. There we go. It starts again. If I tap it, the, it definitely is working fine. So this isn't the problem. And if I reduce the voltage, because sometimes motherboards reduce the voltage to reduce the fan speed, I can feel that the fan speed or the impeller is going slower now and as I increase the rate, as I increase the voltage, I can see that the impeller is speeding up. There we go, 12 volts full speed. So this is actually working. Unfortunately, I never demonstrated how you get the impeller out of this casing. Now, this is a brushless motor. So all you need to do is uh, pull the impeller upwards like that, and you'll see that it comes out of this surrounding. It's a good practice to pull that out just to inspect it to see if there's any dirt or anything that's blocking the impeller's movement. I did that, but unfortunately, I never videoed that part. Right, this cable actually tore off, so I'm just going to resolder it. Right, now that I've drained the liquid, what I did find is this. Um, it did break in my hand. What I find is this. This was one piece. And this came out when I opened the pump. So I'm not sure if this was blocking the impeller. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flush the radiator and install new antifreeze. And then uh, see how it works after that. And have a look at the antifreeze in here. It looks fine. Now over here there's a sticker which I've torn which says warranty void if removed. And I've, I use the same screwdriver. It's still that uh, triangular bit. And what I'm doing is I'm just opening this. And this allows it to breathe making it much easier to extract the water from the radiator and also now to fill it up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flush it and I'll demonstrate how to flush it. 
Right, so now I'm going to flush the radiator. I've got, uh, I've opened the nipple here and now all I'm going to do is put water in it. But why I've got this bucket here is I'd like to see what comes out because I'm just concerned that there's some sediment and that's what may be blocking that impe impeller. All right, so just check in the water to see if there's any sediment. Right, so now I'm going to reassemble this. I'm going to put the pump with the impeller back in. Just make sure all the surfaces are clean, there's no sediment. Uh, all of this is clean now, I can just put this in. What you'll notice is there's a lip there and there's a space for it there. And there's like an alignment nipple which goes in there. So I just flip this upside down and insert it in. There we go, it is in. Now it's time to just screw it in. I'm just gonna hold it at the back, flip this round now, and insert these screws. Right, now I've partially tightened the screws. They're not completely tight because you've got to tighten screws in a correct sequence when you are sealing surfaces. So what you wanna do is you wanna go there, then opposite. Then opposite, then opposite, then opposite, then opposite, then opposite, opposite. And that is how you get an even seal. So I'm going to start here. And I'm going to get it fairly tight. Right, now that's quite tight. Now I'm going opposite. So I'm just going to go here now. Right, that's fairly tight. Now I'm going here. Okay, that's fairly tight. Now I'm going here. Right, so they're all fairly tight. Now I go around one more time. So if I start here, then I go there, then I go there, then I go there, then I go there, there. Most important thing is just, just go opposite, opposite, and then you're fine. Right, now I've just gone around one more time just to make sure they're all completely tight. And now this part is sealed. Right, now I just need to put this cap on. And once again, you want to make sure there is no sediment here, and especially here on these are these o-rings. Right, now this is the old coolant and it's important not to mix different antifreezes. So what you'll need to do is dispose of this and go and get some antifreeze. Now I'm just going to use the engine coolant that I would normally use on my car and this is antifreeze unmixed which means you put 50% antifreeze and 50% water. Right, so I'm now going to dispose of this glycol. That's what it is. It's a glycol mix. I'm going to dispose of this. This is what came out of the CPU liquid cooler. And I'm now going to throw this away. Right, now I'm going to use this new antifreeze. There you can see. And you just put a 50-50 uh, solution. So now I just need to fill it up with some distilled water. I'd rather use distilled water in your radiator because distilled water hasn't got all those minerals which often build up. So now I'm going to be using distilled water. If you haven't got it, it's fine. Just use regular water, but you're supposed to use distilled water. Right, now we just need to get that into the radiator. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to pump it in. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be pouring in the antifreeze, but I'll need a funnel. But as you can see, I don't have a funnel that's this small. So I'm just going to put some press stick here. This is like a type of putty. Uh, you normally use it to uh, put up posters and stickers on walls and things, well, paper on walls and things like that. So I'm just going to put the press stick like that. And now I'm going to put the funnel in the middle here. Like that. I have the bleed screw open over there so that uh, air bubbles can come out and now all I'm going to do is I'm going to power up this motor using a 12 volt so I'm just connecting it to a power supply and I'll just switch that on and then it's now going to be pumping right so the fan is now pumping and I'm just going to pour in the antifreeze you can actually hear it Right, now just close the bull a little bit.
and I'll pour some more and just be careful because it is going to come out here at some point there it's coming it's getting ready it's going to block that a bit right so now it is full and I can switch it off okay so now on this side I can remove this and I can put the cover back on here just make sure this is all clean and that the o-rings are clean and I just seat that over there now it's time to tighten this All right, so you're gonna have to put these in while holding this very tight Right, when you tighten this, you want to go opposite to opposite, opposite to opposite, opposite to opposite. Right, now I suggest you leave this open just to check for leaks. So now I'm going to connect the 12 volts back. I'll switch it on in a moment. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to close that a little bit. Turn this up and down like that. And now we want to switch it on. Right, for the final amount, I'm just going to use a syringe. Right, so what I'm doing is I'm just using a syringe and you want the radiator slightly raised because the air will then come to the top. What I do is I take a screwdriver and I just poke at this while I squirt the antifreeze. As you can see, uh, it stops it from stops it from spilling. The pump is on. Right, I put the screw in there. The pump is on. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this upside down and just give it a bit of a shake. Right, now I'm going to open this again. Just see if it can take any more liquid. Right now, tighten that screw again, and I'm going to just shake this a bit. And do a final check. I can actually see the water, it's right there. Right, I'm going to put my finger here, just shake it again. Now, as you can see, it is completely full. Right, so this is full and uh, hasn't got much air in there. As you can see, I've uh, shaken it up. And even when I shake it, it doesn't sound like there's uh, air bubbles in there. It's almost like shaking a bottle that's got no air gap. So what happens now is I'm going to drain a little bit of that water back out. And the reason why I'm doing that is because water expands when it heats up. Also, don't forget that this is metallic 
uh, probably aluminium and that also expands when it heats up so you don't want it to build up too much pressure and that is why I'm going to remove a little bit of water to leave an air gap the air gap can compress when the water expands so I'm just going to take about 4% out of here see all right so I've taken a bit out and now it's time to close it Right, if you're wondering how much liquid to take out, well, this is a bit tricky. I took out about 5%. As you can see here, there's uh, quite a bit left here. And the reason why you've got to take it out is there's no overflow tank on that Cooler Master cooling solution. As water heats up, it actually expands. And as it cools down below zero, it also expands. So you've got to allow for expansion and contraction. So the reason why I leave an air gap there is as follows. If I take three mils of this antifreeze and try and compress it, I can't. I can't compress it. So if this thing heats up and it expands and I block the expansion, it'll eventually tear this plastic. So what happens is if you leave a bit of air there, then watch this. Look how easy it is to compress air. So air is actually offering the water the expansion space, or as you can see how easy it is to compress air. And when I shake it, I can hear the water moving. There's a bit of air in here, and that's actually what I want. And now I dry it and check for leaks. Right, so I've just hooked that in there, and now I can close this little lid here. You see there are three clips here, so you just want to put those in the right place. Right, now you can dry it, maybe leave it in the sun, or you can just reinstall it. Right, so it is now installed, but not switched on. And I'll show you the temperature on the computer. So there you can see the temperature is pretty high, 71 degrees, and the cooling system is off. Now I'm going to switch on the cooling system and the fans, and you'll see how effective it is now that it is working. Right, it is now connected, and you can actually hear the pump. Right, and you can see how quickly the temperature went from 70 odd degrees, it's now 39 and still dropping.